What's happening is Lynn Davis. I'm a Seattle-based filmmaker with Pangeality Productions, and I'm here in Duval, Washington, with my friend Carolyn. And Carolyn is here in town from New York City, from Brooklyn. And tell me, I, we talked a little bit about your work in funeral homes. Yes. And you had started to tell me a little bit about your work with that you primarily work with the families of people who are dealing with the death of a family member, yeah. but that you also have some interaction with coffins and corpses and bodies themselves. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about what does that work involve? What are you doing? Uh, what kinds of, what kind of, what is that all about for you? Okay, well, I'm an aftercare counselor at Frank R. Bell Funeral Home in Brooklyn. And uh, that's based in New York, of course. And my job as an aftercare counselor is to minister to families who have lost a loved one, uh, primarily from a holistic point of view to see how they're eating, sleeping, and such. But I've taken it upon myself that when I come to work, I honor the space in which the deceased reside. And I visit each chapel and speak to each one of them and let them know that I love them I appreciate their time on earth and tell them how beautiful they are. And then I go to my office to do my work. Nice. Tell me a little bit more about it. Is that uh, you told me that that was a piece of your job and your work that did not come with the job description, but that you took upon yourself, right? Right. So tell me about that. Well, I feel that um, death is to be honored as much as life. And uh, the whole corporate culture there is to honor the living and the dead. So when I adopted that philosophy, that's how I chose to manifest it. And so as soon as I come in, I ask, is there anyone in the chapels? And they let me know if someone is there. And then I, before I go upstairs... And when they say anyone, that means a body? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's always in a coffin? That's always in a coffin, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is that in a... That when you say chapel, so it's a sort of prayer space? It's, it, Within would the be a, it will be a prayer space for um, the families. Mm -hmm. After the embalmer uh, takes care of his business, then, of course, they have to uh, come upstairs to be dressed and placed and cosmetized. What is that? That's, you know, put on the makeup that's required okay. in order to beautify the body. It sounded more like cosmic instead of cosmetic. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. cosmetized. Yeah, cosmetized. Got it. Yes. Sweet. And so what do you feel like you've learned, um, you know, from that specific element or facet of your job, what do you feel like you've learned? What I've learned is to be grateful for life. Um, and to also recognize how delicate life is and how things can easily fall apart in the face of death. And uh, I feel it's very important for me to help people hold it together and to also uh, honor the memory of their loved one, even though uh, various difficult situations may arise as a result of someone dying in their family. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, based on the work that you do and that unique perspective and privilege, how does that inform certain ideas or understandings that you have about America mm. at this particular point in time? At this point in time, it's very saddening when I see how people move so quickly through life and don't savor every moment, you know, that they may have um, for whatever reason, to not carve out the time to explore their talents, explore new skills, and explore each other. And uh, it just becomes a um, passing thing to do, They're pretty much like not recognizing that there's life. It's, it's, um, it's self-affirming to recognize other people, but a lot of times people don't see it that way. And then they wonder why they're lonely or 
uh, alone. You know, they don't take the time to attract love into their lives. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? It's self-affirming to recognize others? Were those yes. your words? Yes. What does that mean to you? That means that when you live in a vacuum, so for myself as a writer and um, coming to this workshop, I got a whole different view of myself as a writer by sharing myself than just being alone in my space and being one with the paper. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, do you have ideas that you would like to share specifically with young people about living a full life, about reflecting from your perspective, your life lived as well as within the context of the work that you do? Yes. For the young people, I really want to stress education. Education comes in many forms. It doesn't have to be a college degree. But I really stress wholesome education that is progressive, that will move you to the next level and not jeopardize your life or the lives of others. And um, realize that it's a gift to wake up breathing and in good health and uh, surrounded by love. And if you can't find love at home, you can find someone who loves you in the appropriate circles. And it will usually spring from your talents. So it's important to really do some self-reflection and self-examination. That's how I self-actualized and continue to self-actualize. More and more I learn how to find, you know, the saying goes, water rises to its own level. I am learning more and more how to find my own level, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, and physically. Mm -hmm. Nice. You come here from Brooklyn, from New York City. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, we sit at the foot of this massive cedar tree here in Western Washington. Yes. We're surrounded by juicy, mossy, moist <laughs> forest. And I wonder what it's like for you to come from such an urban environment and to be here in this uh, uniquely special environment of Western Washington. Well, I love it here. And uh, I actually take as many opportunities as I can to be in nature in Brooklyn, even though it's urban. As a matter of fact, in June, I've arranged for some mourners to accompany me to Botanic Garden because plant life um, and wildlife represent healing to me. And I wanna share that with others. As a certified aromatherapist, I know the value of scents and uh, the value of the flowers that give us the scents. So, um, yeah, I try to keep myself immersed in nature as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Anything else that you'd like to share? Pardon me? Anything else you'd like to share? Um, I'm grateful for having met you. Uh, very refreshing. And I love to watch you and see your wheels turning because I know you're going to come up with something pretty profound. And... Uh, you know, I love the people that I've met while I was here and look forward to future dreaming, future dream trips. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Thank, you. Thank you. So I'm Len Davis, a Seattle-based filmmaker. I'm here in Duval, Washington at Mosswood Hollow Retreat Center. We're here for a conscious dreaming workshop with Robert Moss. And I'm here with my new friend, Carolyn Jones, sitting under this gorgeous, massive cedar tree. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you. Stay fresh. No, love you. <laughs>